just drop every single investor, had them niggas just walk out quietly. The only person who made a fuss was Chuck's neighbor. Chuck, everybody else got dropped like a hot potato and just walked out like they was just handed a slice of cake after church service. Billionaires do that, child? Okay. What's up? It's Nikki. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be reviewing season six, episode one of the Showtime series, Billions. So our introduction to the new season picks up with Axelrod gone. He fled to Switzerland to avoid being arrested by Chuck Rose. Michael Prince, who had a hand in taking him down, but also had a hand in helping X flee so that he could, well, flee to Switzerland so that he could help to facilitate for himself in exchange to buy X company, his bank, etc. He's trying to rebuild X cap and decide if he can revamp things with the current traders or if he needs to get all new people in there. Now, the tone of the show has definitely changed. I wasn't really excited with this first episode. I was honest, honestly a little bored, but I am excited for the season. I have high hopes that they can pull together something really epic. This show, in my opinion, has been a masterpiece. It has been great at dialogue, characters, great tension. I have high hopes they can create magic again. So let's hope they do. Now, Axe was a great character. The early seasons of Axe versus Chuck were so freaking good. That very first showdown, like the very first time we saw Chuck and Axe on screen together was so exhilarating. It was like Godzilla versus King Kong Child. Axe and Chuck was always so exciting anytime they were on screen together. But Honestly, over time, it got tired for me. It did. X got tired to me. I'm sorry. Chuck versus X got tired for me. We needed to get rid of X. I was over it. I'm not sure how the masses felt about it, but I wanted it to be a situation where someone bigger and badder came in, not X off his throne. Someone who was going to be even more ruthless and even more unstoppable than Axe was. Now, Axe fleeing to Switzerland was anticlimactic for me. It was such a letdown. It was not exciting and it was very un rod like To just lay down and run? We had this huge build up with Rose versus Axe. So that ended... With the empty helicopter, which I saw the mile away that he was going to flee. I was like, child, he ain't going to jail. Well, it was really disappointing for me. I wanted Axe to go out, but I wanted him to go out in a blaze of glory. Give him the proper send-off for his character, which they did not. Now, before, when Axe was getting arrested, he was gung-ho by fighting, and I'm not going to run. But this time, he just like, nope, I'm going to just run and abandoned his boys i don't know i didn't like it it didn't make sense i don't know if something happened behind the scenes i don't know if the, the actor wanted to leave look x was a huge part of what made this show great but the show could not continue for a hundred seasons with x versus rose like it had to end at some point i'm fine with the end of x i am not fine with how he exited and i'm not fine with the replacement the tone of the show has shifted. There was a tension and excitement and adrenaline rush that just is not there anymore. Now, in season five, I actually like Prince. And I actually liked him more than X. And I know that's probably controversial, but I did. At that point, I was over X. I really was. Now, the actor who plays Prince, I could not stand him on the strain Oh my God, him and his dang son, child. And sometimes it's be messing me up because then when I see the ad, I'll be like, my G, I don't like you. <laughs> but then when he came onto this show as Prince, I was like, okay, shoot, I can get down with him now. I liked him on this. But child, starting season six, I'm not feeling Prince. I'm not feeling it. I'm not sure if it's the change in the dynamic of our characters because we don't have X there. I'm 
not sure if it's because we're missing the element of a character like X, of having like a monster, a shark. I'm not sure what it is. Our new and familiar key players are Rose, Prince, Taylor, Wendy, Wags, and Scooter. I wish X would have taken out Taylor before he got taken out. Now, I like Taylor, but the character has overstayed their welcome and usefulness to the show, in my humble opinion. Taylor is a robot. <laughs> They are not human. They are the Terminator. Nothing about Taylor is human. But when the character was first introduced, I liked the character. And I liked that robot Terminator attitude. I liked the dynamic of Taylor in the midst of X, Cap, and all those characters. I liked the Taylor Cap team when she branched off and did her thing. And Taylor versus X was exciting to me. X just could not beat them. Taylor sniffed out every single trap that X and Wendy tried to get her to step into, child. Taylor is genius level and literally just about saw everything coming. But it has gotten old. I'm sick and tired of Taylor. I don't know if it's how she's being, they're being written now. It's just the same old, same old. And speaking of robots, Prince has his generic brand wags, Scooter, and Cha. He is really, really unexciting to watch. Taylor is the upgraded, superior new model Terminator, and Scooter is the inferior model Terminator, child. So one of the main issues of the episode was the fact that Wendy and Taylor do not trust Prince. Don't like him. Well, I don't know if it's don't like, but they don't trust him, child. He bought X Cap, including their company that was under X. Wait, no. Not under X Cap. Prince bought X shares in Taylor and Wendy Company, which are the majority shares. Because remember, Wendy sold her shares or some of her shares to X to get $25 million to pay Rose in a divorce settlement so he couldn't look through their books. So Prince calls a meeting, but Taylor was missing in action from the meeting. But I got confused with this. Was this a meeting or not? Taylor, two employees were the only two at the meeting. Scooter tells them everyone knew to be here. Prince is like, he announced all hands on deck or whatever. So the girl tells Prince, I don't know how that boy named child, but she tells Prince, Taylor shows up when she shows up or whatever. But once Taylor shows up, the other two leave. So was this a meeting or not? <laughs> Were they all supposed to be here or not? Because why did the other two who was there on time for the meeting leave the meeting once Taylor finally made it late to the meeting? Whatever. Taylor does not trust Prince, but I actually think it would serve Taylor to work with him. Or I could be wrong and this good guy spill could all just be an act child. But it is confusing to me because... If Taylor wants to make money, don't they have to go along and work for him or whatever? Like, is, like what like what are we doing? What, what's the game plan? Like, I don't understand. Are we just not doing nothing? Are we just not working? Are we just not making money? Now, Wendy is on my last motherfucking nerves. And she has always been on my nerves. But it was never that, like, extreme or deep. But I'm over her. Wendy could go, child. Wendy can go. She has always been really confusing to me. Now... When there was the whole X versus Rose and her, like, just her attitude with all that, when Chuck snuck in her session notes to get info on X and they have that huge argument and Chuck is like, a wife cannot be compelled to testify against her husband. But y'all, uh, Wendy was like, they don't have to compel me. I'm going to volunteer. Okay, that was so confusing to me and annoying. So, you would happily testify against your husband for doing something illegal or unscrupulous, but not X? Like, it was always so confusing to me how even though X was vindictive, unscrupulous, did, like, broke the law, whatever, anything he did that was, like, underhanded, Wendy was always just, what, on board with him? But not on board with the ish that Chuck and his dad does? What's the goddamn difference, child? 
I don't know. That stuff, like the stuff like that will hurt out of my nerve. Like ex had pictures of you taken, unbeknownst to you, of you being naked and was using your search history with the S and M stuff, like pulling that out on you. It was just really confusing why she was always on board with ex no matter what, but would go so hard against Chuck and the ish he would do. I don't know. I then when Chuck wanted her to quit ex cap. She was all, I helped build this. I care about these employees. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Because now that Prince owns the place, she just, what, don't give an inch no more? Yeah, it might be under a new name, but it is technically the same company you helped build that you kept loving to say that and it's the same people you were helping so why is now Wendy so unwilling to help the company to thrive it just is not making much sense to me the math not mathing to me her attitude is getting on my nerves y'all is it just me maybe it's just me so we have our usual cast of ass cap characters including my boy wags I did enjoy seeing the usual gang, though. I did feel the absence of Dollar Bill and Mafi. I'm curious to see if they're going to be a part of this season, if or when they're going to pop up as like a rival firm or something. So I didn't really get this. Okay, now Prince and Scooter gives all the employees a ring, like under false pretense. The rings are connected to an app on the employees' phones, and it allows Prince to see their location and all kind of like personal details, but like details of their heart rate. Nah, okay, tracking them to see, I guess, if they going to meet with a rival firm or something. Okay, but why are you tracking their heartbeat and stuff like that? I, I was confused by that. Like, I don't know. Like, what is that? Am I missing something, y'all? So, they end up seeing that Wags is having a heart attack. So, Prince and Scooter end up with the moral dilemma of call 911, get Wags help, and potentially blow our cover, or do nothing, let Wags die. <laughs> so, paramedics show up at Wags' place. He thinks they strippers, child. And they like, uh, sir, you having a heart attack, bro. Please take this pill and let us get you some help. Y'all, I need somebody to tell me what is Peloton. What is Peloton? Am I out the loop on something? Why Peloton keeps showing up on TV shows giving niggas heart attacks? Is this a real thing? Y'all, is this a real thing? Are people catching heart attacks on Peloton? Like what, workout equipment? What am I missing? What am I not in the loop on? I feel like there is an inside joke that I am not in on when it comes to this Peloton stuff. Why I keep seeing Peloton on TV giving niggas heart attacks? Nah, I was pretty bored with this episode, but this was a fun scene. I liked when Wags was like, I liked you better when y'all were strippers. <laughs> and the medics say, uh, we were never strippers. Nah, this didn't really make any sense to me it is not until Wes comes into the office and is asked how did he recognize the signs that he was having a heart attack and well if you didn't know you was having a heart attack child how you knew to call 911 child why did it take the axe cap crew for Wags to recognize the fact that paramedics just showed up to his place all willy-nilly that, for me, would have literally been the first question I would have asked. Like, as soon as them niggas came in my place, I would have been like, <laughs> like, child, how the hell y'all get here? Paramedics do not just show up, child. They have to be called by somebody. And if it ain't the body that's living there, who called them? So this is when Wags puts two and two together and the cat is out of the bag regarding the rings. But Scooter is like... <laughs> Look, y'all agreed to the ish. Y'all agreed to the terms when you downloaded the app. Which, of course, nobody ever reads that stuff. Like, ever. It's so long. I mean, did you see the thing? It's like the Declaration of Independence. But it turns out, Taylor and her tech geeks were up on the jig. Taylor put the ring on her dog collar? Uh... Nah, child, since when does Taylor have a dog? 
Y'all, that came out of nowhere. And aren't dogs what humans use to spot the Terminators? How the Terminator got the dog? Now, this ain't make no dang sense. Prince and Scooter are talking right at the giant glass wall, staring right at Wags in his office. They are talking about getting rid of Wags as they stare right at him while standing at the giant glass wall. And Wags is just sitting there at his desk staring into space. Uh, bruh, you see these niggas just standing there talking and staring at you? I don't know, y'all. That was weird. That didn't make no sense. I don't know. <laughs> why would they stand there? And why was Wags just staring into space like they weren't right there? I don't know. Child, why are we standing at the dang glass wall staring at the nigga we plotting on as we talking and plotting on them? So, Prince goes into Wags' office and Wags is clear that they want to fire him at some point today, tomorrow, next week, whatever. He done already peaked game. But X included some kind of clause or something where they can't just fire Wags, right? They would have to pay him out like 80 million, I think it was, 80 billion. So... Prince and Wags are negotiating a payout amount because Prince ain't going to pay like the full payout amount to get him to get out of there. So they're trying to just negotiate. But as they are haggling, Prince realizes that it is not just about the money that Wags needs that place. Now, I like this. Wags tells Scooter to come into the room and he asks him, yo, tell me what you know about the traders. And Scooter lists off some stuff that, in the words of Wags, can be found on LinkedIn. And Wags breaks the ish down regarding the traders, making it very clear that, yeah, Wags may need this place, but my nigga, y'all need him too. Wags knows the traders beyond just surface level ish. He learns how to get this machine. He knows how to make the machine machine move smooth. He knows what motivates them. And he shows Prince that he is an asset to how things run at X Kept. Y'all, you can't just toss the nigga to the wayside. You need my boy Wags. Now, I don't know what the hell they are doing with Chuck's storyline, child. I do not want to see Chuck in the day battle with Gettysburg or whatever the hell. That opening scene, child, I couldn't tell if they were in the Civil War or the damn Salem witch trial. Y'all, what? Okay, okay. What was this? What? What did I? I don't want to see white folk with no goddamn pitchforks and fire. I don't know. I don't want. I, that, that, I was scared. I don't want to see Rose on the damn farm growing corn. Child, what are we doing? What is Chuck in the country for? Why is Chuck in the damn country? I didn't even know that there was country in New York. I thought the Hamptons was the only, like, dang countryside of New York. I don't know, child. So, on this episode, Rose is going after his billionaire country neighbor who shoots off cannonballs every day because, yeah, that's just a normal indulgence or something. I don't know, child. This whole situation reminded me of that show, Fear Thy Neighbor. Like, the mess was crazy. And I was confused. Okay. Nah. I ain't never used no cannon or no musket or none of that ish. But if you shoot a cannon, doesn't the cannonball fly somewhere? How the hell you just shooting no cannonball shot? How is that safe? I'm not sure this made like much sense to me. I don't care how much money you have. This not fireworks, bro. This is a cannonball. I don't know. Are cannons not as dangerous as I'm thinking they are or something? I don't know. So, Rose tries to speak with his neighbor regarding the disturbance of these goddamn cannonballs. The mess is crazy. He tries to speak with the mayor of the town, but the neighbor is a billionaire, which means well-connected and pretty much just child doing whatever the heck he want to do. Child, the neighbor, he was weird. What the hell what was he trying to relive, child? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Now, I'm really confused as to why Rose ran away to the day country. 
bruh, you beat ex. Like, look, whatever. He fled and you didn't put him in jail. But, child, that's semantics. You won. And, child, Rose just always has to fixate on an enemy. So, he is now fixated on Prince for, I guess, taking his trophy, a.k.a. helping ex flee. But that don't make any sense because, child, he helped you finally beat X. He the reason you got the nigga up out of here. But Rose is also just angry at what? All billionaires in general? Okay. So, turns out Rose's neighbor is also an investor at X Cap, a.k.a. now an investor with Prince. And he calls because he wants Wendy to settle things. Of course, child, she refuses. So... Prince goes down to see Rose. I didn't know you can call your investor to come help you with a name dispute, whatever, child. He offers to be an ally to Rose. He tells him that, look, I owe you a debt and a Lannister always pays their debts. And also that it would not look good for Chuck to drag the neighbor into court or get into a whole little battle because Rose's dad is an investor with Prince. Because remember, he was with Axe Cap. Now, y'all... Look, <clears throat> I done been team Rose, okay? I've been rooting for Rose, man, but I do not like Rose no more. Get Chuck the fuck up out of here, child. They need to get Rose the fuck up out of here. And just completely, I guess, revamp the show with new key players, monster players. But I don't know. Maybe I'm being pre premature. Maybe they finna really go somewhere good with this. But I don't like the new Rose. His attitude and the direction I feel they are going in with him is irking me. Now, when Prince goes to see Rose, I actually like this scene. Right? Not as dynamic as those first early Rose versus X showdown-like conversations. But I enjoyed it. Now... I thought, good scene, good dialogue, great acting, obviously. But, child, Rose climbs up on his mother-freaking high horse. Billionaires break the laws of decency, even while obeying the letter of the law. Having that much is criminal. Man, you sound like a baby. What, like, what are you talking about? He tells Prince that he holds his neighbor's money, which means he holds the whole bag. Child, what that mean? I guess that went over my head. I, what, that, what that mean? Prince says a great line about Rose's attitude when he says, I see no glory in having money myself, but commanding those who do. I really have no idea why Rose feels he is so freaking morally superior. Child, did you grow up rich? Ain't your daddy a billionaire, millionaire, whatever a F? His dad is privileged and wealthy, and so is Rose. Did he get $25 million in his divorce settlement? Wasn't you married to a wealthy woman who got like a $9 million bonus? What is with his current crusade against wealth? I'm not understanding. Like, I'm so confused. Rose needs to be taken out, child. Or knocked down a peg, whatever. But his preachy, superior attitude towards the billionaires is not the direction I want for the show. I'm just a poor little black girl, child. Wealth hoarding is not good, but I want to see the ex, okay? People like him. I want to see the billionaires dipping and dabbing and doing whatever they want to do. That's what the show is for. But, child, the way they write in his character for me is annoying. And more so because, nigga, you not clean. Nigga, you privileged. Nigga, you rich. You have power. You have used your power for your own will and personal gain. You have a superior-ass attitude. You done done dirt. You have broken the law. My G, you are no better than all the freaking billionaires you hate. Nigga, y'all in the same boat. You just may not have the billions, but you got some millions. So, Waz gets the team together and gives them a speech, gets them motivated, but they interrupt it by Scooter because Prince has called a meeting with the investors and his employees. Okay, so, wait a minute. Investors just come running when Prince blows the dog whistle? There wasn't no scheduled meeting, my nigga. Prince announces that instead of firing all the employees for his revamp, he will be dropping all the investors. Now, child, look, I don't know nothing about nothing. I don't know nothing about the financial industry or Wall Street, child. I ain't never even seen the movie Wall Street. <laughs> but can a firm just drop every single solitary investor? 
just lose. Ain't, ain't that all y'all? Ain't, ain't that all the revenue? All the income, whatever. And can you just drop every single investor? Have them niggas just walk out quietly. The only person who made a fuss was Chuck's neighbor. Chuck, everybody else got dropped like a hot potato and just walked out like they was just handed a slice of cake after church service. Billionaires do that, child? Okay. Prince tells them that if they reach the new standards for ethics and business, maybe they will have them back. Usually, they have to convince investors to partner with their firm, but now investors will have to convince his firm to work with them. I guess, child. The only investor Prince is keeping on is the New York Firefighters Fund. I want to laugh at his dang name, the Prince List, whatever. <laughs> okay, child. I don't know about this. But like I said, I ain't no financial guru. It sure seems like y'all gonna take a huge cut financially. But child, what do I know? So even though the ASCAP team was feeling like they used to work for a shark and they are not on board with this new little cuddly care bear guy approach. Now, all of a sudden, dropping all day investors, when's everybody over? Okay. And now they like Prince or on board with him. Okay. So Rose ends up paying a guy from the State Department of Environmental Conservation using money to get what you want. Ain't that what you claiming the billionaires do? Or he paid, like he paid him off. He paid to fund research or something else, child, to get him to put endangered turtles in the creek between the properties. Rose, you're doing the same thing to be in Okay, so they got a restraining order to keep the neighbor from shooting off the cannons because, you know, preservation of the wildlife. But then Rose shoots off the cannon one last time? Huh? <sighs> like, y'all, this did not make a little bit of sense. What was the point of doing that? So, I guess rules only apply to everybody but you. I feel like the entitled one is Chuck Rhodes. Man, this show started off so brilliantly, and this first episode isn't terrible, but I sure hope they hit their stride soon, child. And I really hope everything they setting up plays out much better than I am imagining it's going to play out. I need Prince to be a monster. But now, remember, Prince did say how he used to be. Y'all know he screwed over his first little dead partner. So hopefully he brings out that side. You could have X as it the show, but you got to bring in someone brilliant, someone on a higher level than X to fill the void. You got to bring in a character that is going to be just as or more exciting than acts more ruthless a lot of the magic of this show in my opinion was the dynamic of the x rose rivalry it was the x and his team the lawyer the fixer guy etc it was how x could manipulate every single solitary situation it was the x attitude you can't just remove those things without replacing them with something just as grand and entertaining. But what do I know, child? <laughs> Showtime, the professionals. Hopefully, they're going to get it together. Great music and score in this episode, though. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my content, make sure you like this video. Support the channel. If you want to go along with me, episode by episode for the sixth season of billions make sure you subscribe hit the bell notification so you will be alerted when i post make sure you comment down below share this video i'll see you in the next video thank you